Hey, what's up, YouTube? Here's another bad production, and I'm probably going to uh, go a little bit more in detail on a second video, which I will roughly edit it to, you see, got two videos in one, and that's about the only editing that I do. If I can figure out how to fast forward stuff and all that things, um, probably make it happier for everybody, but uh, that'll take a while. Anyway, so what do I have here? These things are poncho liners or whoobies. Um, now I've got, what, how many do I have? I don't remember, I think it's five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five of these things from, uh, most of these are made in the U.S., but two of them are not. Um, so let's start with the one on the top. So... This one on top is made by, I don't know how you say it, is it uh, Kifaru? Kifaru? Anyway, um, this thing is heavier, you know, as far as insulation than the other ones. This thing weighs almost two pounds. I think it's like one pound, 15 ounces. So we'll just call it two pounds. Um, you can see that it's physically not quite as wide as the uh, USGI ones. Um, and I don't, it doesn't really bother me too much, but I'll tell you, I am six feet tall and 200 and about 15 pounds, maybe 210. Um, and when you take a look at it, it's not quite as wide when these things are folded. Um, it doesn't always drape me if I'm laying on it and I'm folding it like this. Most of the time I'm using this just as like a, an over blanket on top of, um, you know, one of my sleeping bags or something like that for extra warmth. Um. Very rarely will I put this underneath. Um, you know, what's great about this is they have that rhino skin, which is some kind of sim nylon or something like that. Um, it's got a DWR treating on here, which makes it very water resistant, but not waterproof. Um, but it also makes it very slippery. So if you try to put this thing under your... Um, sleeping bag and uh, and depending on how level your campsite is you might slip around on this um i have slept with just this you know i ended up waking up in in the middle of the night because uh i didn't secure these loops so i've got a i've been debating on using some kind of um cord or um buttons or knobs or something like that that I can put here to keep this together and then I may just use this as my only sleeping thing I live in uh, Washington State's a temperate area it doesn't get too cold and sometimes it gets hot but uh, anyway um, I think that if I if I did that then I would be more comfortable using this one other thing, I don't use this one very much. I've had this for about three years now. Um, I've used it probably uh, six to eight times during that time. Part of it was I was hospitalized, so I really wasn't doing much. Um, but it's also because it, it, it's, it's so warm, I think this thing's rated to about 30, 35 degrees. Um, I sleep very hot, so I overheat super easy, and that's one reason I don't use this one very often. Um, and I'm worried to leave this in my vehicle because I live in Freattle, or work in Freattle, and there's a lot of uh, people breaking in and stealing stuff like that. And I don't want to lose 150 so odd um, dollars um, because somebody breaking in. So in my vehicles, I usually have one of these other ones. 
Um, so let's go next. Uh, underneath that one, I have the Israeli um, poncho liner. I forget. They've got some special name for it. I don't know. I don't remember what it is. It's not that important to me. Um, this one, what I like about it is it has a very, very uh, I don't know. To me, it seems like a tougher fabric outside here. And then it's also it's not slippery. So this one I've used a few times with my son and I'll put this underneath the sleeping bags. Um you know in the in the tent um so we're not slipping around. This is the one I usually keep inside of my uh vehicle as well. And you can see here this thing is still not quite as wide as the uh, USGI ones, and it's also shorter, and that's not a big deal. I'm not. I'm usually not using this like a little taco or sleeping bag anyway. Um, but I like this one. I think I got this around thirty-five dollars or so on this. It said it was used, but I mean, it looks like it's pretty much brand new to me. It may have been in. Uh, storage for a long time but uh i'm very happy with that purchase and it's not overly uh hot and that's what i like it um so i'll usually roll this thing and then put a strap around it throw this in my suv all right the next one is uh this one is like a miltech one so when I originally bought this, I got it from Sportsman's Guide. I think it was around 25 bucks, And they said it was a USGI. But based on the pictures, I, I was like, I don't think so. Because the, uh, the issued ones have two different colors on the Marpat, which you'll see soon here. Um, and let's take a look. They're also not using, like, ripstop... Um, nylon on these so um, you still have that kind of a thread pattern on here for the panels and somewhere on here if I can find it they've got a they have a bogus NSN on this um, I did notify sportsman's guide and then you know they take care of you so they said they would I could either send it back and get my money back or, you know, whatever I wanted to do with it. I decided to keep it um, just so I wasn't using my real ones <laughs> and wearing them out. So I actually use this. I was using this for a while till my uh, wife, uh, you know, said it's ugly. <laughs> and I thought I thought it was missing as, uh, as well as my issue one. But I did finally find where she stored them at. I... I thought she was going to uh, actually throw them away. But uh, these things are great. I mean, you know, I'll just, I like sleeping with these versus regular blankets and stuff on my bed. And let me see, they've got some bogus um, tag here with, you can't see it very well right now. But anyway, they have like a NSN. And if you search that, there's no such NSN. So it's got the same sequence of numbers and things like that, but it doesn't really exist. And what's interesting, too, is they did somewhere on here in multiple locations, they do have the uh, Eagle Globe and Anchor on there, which was one way that the Marines were trying to, um, you know, reserve this camo pattern. Uh I'm not going to take time to find this. It'll make this even longer, right? Um, some of the threads have come loose from it. I have been using it. I mean, it's not terrible. And for 25 bucks, I don't, I don't think you're wasting your money. But don't think that this is an actual USGI. Um, it's also a little bit thicker and heavier than the issued ones, which in some way makes it you know, a little bit warmer, 
but not too warm. And so that's another reason I kept it. So it's a little bit different than the issued ones. And then the next guy we've got is the Marpat USGI. So you can see here what I was talking about where you've got the two different patterns. You've got the camouflage outside and the coyote brown on the inside. Um, obviously I've had this for years. It's, it's fading. And I think I've only washed it a, a few times. Um, most of this stuff you don't really need to wash that much because you're going to wear it out. But, you know, if it gets, like, too stinky or something like that, then by all means do that. Um, I usually like to let these things hang outside or things like that rather than uh, washing all the time after every use. But, uh, you know, sometimes if you're in a muddy campground or, or whatever, you, you're going to have to wash these eventually, right? Um now this one is the same dimensions as the uh, the second USMC one that I have. And how these things differ is this has a zipper sewn on to this, which I really like. That's why I bought it. Um, this guy got somewhere around thirty dollars years ago i think they're usually running for 40 to 55 unused if you're looking at ebay or some of this um supply surplus stuff see there's my speaking again um <clears throat> but i i when i was in the marines over 25 years ago i had the woodland version of this and i love that thing it's great just to uh drape on yourself and some you know if it's getting a little chilly things like that um you know i like it around the house but now i hide them <laughs> you've seen my videos um so let's take a look at this one so what makes this usmc one different is um yeah it does have the um rip stop nylon on here but they did put a dwr on this to make it uh, water resistant and then they installed this zipper now this zipper obviously makes it kind of like a very light sleeping bag i've used this one quite a few times in the summer when i overheat and uh you know if you start to feel a little cool then you're just gonna put on some more um clothing correct um but you can open this up and so you can use this just like the original one you've got all these tie-ons out here and there's the nsn and the tag and all that good stuff and it's the dual pattern outside and inside um, this one is slightly heavier than the other one, and sorry, I can't really measure it, but to me it seems like 50% to 100% uh, more um, stuffing inside of there. And this zipper really doesn't bug me if I'm just using this as a big blanket, which I'll take this one sometimes instead of... Uh, the Kifaru. But let's kind of take a look at this Kifaru against your standard. It's hard to see on here, but this thing is, there's no seams on this except for on the edges. And so I guess in theory you don't have all that uh, extra warmth going through the seams, but I overheat so it's not it's not a big thing. I mean, I haven't really tried this in a really cold weather. And then I think I would really like this. But, you know, like I said, most of the time, unless it's in the winter, I I can't really use this much. Um, and my uh, wife did actually use this and like it. 
wine stuffer. She just couldn't stand the uh, camouflage on this. You know, I think our power went out um, during the winter. And so this thing kept her nice and toasty. And, and all of these, honestly, for me, they warm me up right away. When you put this against yourself, you immediately get that warmth, um, even more so on this guy. Um, but it's very slippery, too. Anyway, so let me uh, stop this, and then I'll restart, and I'll show you how this thing folds into itself in that little... Um, bag there now these in general that and they don't come with a stuff sack and i like that because you know if i'm packing my rucksack then i can just put this however i want shove it in there or i might roll it fold it depending on how much room i have and where i'm trying to put these things um usually what i do is i have like a little usgi um fanny pack which I'll put these in and then I'll put that I'll attach that to the bottom of my rucksack um, or I may just stuff them inside of there if I've got some room that's all I got right now thanks all right here it is here's the second part so I did stuff this thing in there it only takes you about 30 seconds uh, maybe 60 seconds um, to stuff this thing in here um, this is just for storage, so you can compress this thing a lot more, but you don't want to leave that compressed for, you know, a long periods of time. So, you know, if you're out there hiking, uh, hunting, or whatever you're doing, that's, that's fine to really compress this thing very small, but you don't want to leave it that way for a long time. And so this is appropriate to have this just uncompressed in this stuff bag as it is. And it's not going to ruin that uh, liner inside of there. Um, that's one of the reasons that I do like this. And uh, I showed you these together because I, I usually, I, I don't remember seeing like somebody with multiple poncho liners or woobies together and that's why I made this video and I usually try to do something you don't see as often with uh, some of the other people the other people also give <laughs> better information on these than I do as well but I'm just doing like a quick overview as quick as I can talk and I blabber a lot anyway Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, uh, post them on there. I will answer as soon as I can. Bye-bye.